Hello, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert OET teachers here at E2 Language. What we're going to do in this lesson is look at, or listen to rather, listening part A, which of the listening subtests is probably the easiest one. So you want to make sure that you max it out and you get full points, okay? Let's take a look at it. So what we're looking at here is half of a listening part A subtest, and there are six gaps. So on test A, you'll actually have 12 gaps to complete. So this is a little mini test, if you like. Now, the first thing you want to do in the preparation time is predict what words can fill the gaps. So I'm going to give you just 30 seconds to go through this, and I want you to anticipate or think about what words might fill the gaps here. Okay, so when you see one of those gaps, there's two ways that you can think about what word might fill the gap. One is you can think about the part of speech. Is it a noun or a verb or an adjective that might fill the gap? Or you can go one step further and actually sort of do a prediction that it might be a verb like runs or might be a noun like headache or something like that. So not the part of speech, but an actual word. Now, you might not actually get that right. It's unlikely that you can actually predict it. But what this does is it sets you up for when you're listening, you're going to be listening for a word similar to headache, for example. So maybe the actual answer would be sore throat, something like that. Anyway, let's take another look. So if I look here, some of these I can predict. Uh, this one I can't classify it as. I have, I have no idea what that is. Uh, gym, three days per week for uh, some sort of sport, I guess, or exercise. Uh, here's a good one, number three. So plays, well, this is definitely a sport. Plays something on weekends. Husband believes it is, I have no idea what that one is. I can leave that one. Does not use ah. This tells me that this needs to be a noun, a thing at time of shortness of breath. So we can sort of, assume, who knows, maybe you've got an idea here. Here we have the heading occupation. So here we're looking for a, a job title. So hopefully that makes it easier for you. Let's now get straight into it. Are you ready? Listen very carefully and write down the answers on a piece of paper from one to six. Hi Kathy, I'm Dr. Bronson, and I'll be filling in for your usual doctor who's unfortunately ill today. Tell me, what can I help you with? Well, I've had asthma for as long as I can remember, probably since I was six, I think, and it's been out of control for the last couple of years. It's been classified as mild persistent. My inhalers work well, and I very rarely need my rescue inhaler these days. Nothing's changed in my regular routine. I go to the gym three days a week, and I do a yoga class. It's very gentle, and it really helps me with my concentration. I walk to work, which is around two kilometers, and I don't have any issue with that. In fact, I find it a terrific way to start the day, and I'm never short of breath. I catch the bus home because at the end of the day, I'm pretty worn out. On weekends, I play doubles tennis with my husband and another couple. I eat healthy meals, but the last few nights, something seems different. Can you tell me what you mean by different? Well, it's typically as I lie down on the pillow, I get this sudden shortness of breath, like someone's put their hand quite firmly over my mouth. I can still breathe, obviously, but it's difficult. It happens every night. We're in the process of buying a house and trying to sell ours at the same time. And my husband is convinced that it's just anxiety. The funny thing is, he might be right, because every time that it happens, instead of reaching for my rescue inhaler, I just sit up and after a few minutes, it's gone. You mentioned that you're moving house at the moment. May I ask, what type of work do you do? I'm an IT manager. Well, I am for now, but there's a rumor going around that I might lose my job very soon. Okay, so before we go through the answers, I very quickly want to talk to you about our mini mock test with feedback, which you can see here. So if you have not ever taken the OET test, but you've got one coming up, then you should take the mini mock test with feedback. Or if you have taken the OET test before and you've been unsuccessful, but you don't really know why, you should also take the mini mock test with feedback. The reason is our mini mock test with feedback simulates the real exam 
and gives you feedback on all of the different subtests and down to the question level. So you can see precisely what you're doing right, which is important, but more importantly, what you're doing wrong. It also comes with writing feedback from our expert teachers, as well as a one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on Zoom, a speaking consultation or a speaking subtest as well. So it's well worth the money. It will really prepare you for your test, or at least tell you what you need to do before your test, okay? All right, let's take a look at these answers. So on the right-hand side, we have the transcript from the audio. And you can see there that there was a doctor speaking to a patient, right? Let's go through and we'll look at the relationship between the dot point or the statement here and the transcript itself. So first of all, there's a little bit of an introduction. They all have a little intro. Then we're looking at background here and the doctor has asked Kathy about her background, so we know we're up to here. She mentioned something about um, having asthma since the age of six, which is also written here, so you know where you are. Then we've got classified as. Now she actually says word for word or verbatim, classified as mild persistent, okay? Hopefully you got that one. She then goes on to say something about gym three days per week for something. Now. This language will not necessarily be exactly the same as the statement here. Sometimes there'll be synonyms, sometimes there'll be uh, a different word form. For example, let's take a look here. So here she says, Jim, three days a week to do a yoga class. So there I think we have the answer. Uh, let's skip this one here. Plays something on weekends. She says, on weekends I play doubles tennis. So we think we have the answer there. And we were predicting that it, this was going to be a sport because of the verb play. Okay, now down here, patient's description of problem. Let's take a look. So husband believes it is. So let's scan the text here or imagine we're listening to the audio. If we look down here, we can see my husband. So we've got a key word there, which we're using uh, directly from the statement here. Now here it says believes, and here it's convinced. So we've got a synonym, which means the same thing. Now her husband thinks it's just anxiety. So there's the probably the answer there, which we'll confirm in a second. Finally, we've got occupation. So they speak for a little bit longer. And then finally, occupation is mentioned right here. So if we look at the answers, you can see the answer for number one is mild persistent. You do not need the quotation marks, though if you do use them, that is completely fine. Gym three days per week for yoga. You could have also yoga class. Both of those answers would be considered correct. Number three could be tennis or doubles tennis would also be considered correct. Husband believes number four, it is anxiety. Number five, rescue inhaler. If you just wrote the word inhaler, it would probably be considered incorrect because you needed that other adjective there or the compound noun, the two parts, to have the actual correct answer. So just be careful with two word answers, whether you need that adjective or that other noun to create the phrase that has the exact meaning that they're listening for or they're looking for, okay? And finally, the answer to number six was IT manager. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we're gonna to listen to the audio again. I want you to listen very carefully because we've predicted the answers, we've looked at all the gaps there, we've actually looked at the transcript, we know what the answers are, but this time, listen carefully, and I want you to see or hear the relationship between the audio and the answers, okay? Ready? Let's listen one more time. Hi, Kathy. I'm Dr. Bronson, and I'll be filling in for your usual doctor who's unfortunately ill today. Tell me, what can I help you with? Well, I've had asthma for as long as I can remember, probably since I was six, I think, and it's been out of control for the last couple of years. It's been classified as mild persistent. My inhalers work well, and I very rarely need my rescue inhaler these days. Nothing's changed in my regular routine. I go to the gym three days a week, and I do a yoga class. It's very gentle, and it really helps me with my concentration. I walk to work, which is around two kilometers, and I don't have any issue with that. In fact, I find it a terrific way to start the day, and I'm never short of breath. I catch the bus home because at the end of the day, I'm pretty worn out. On weekends, I play doubles tennis with my husband and another couple. I eat healthy meals, but the last few nights, something seems different. Can you tell me what you mean by different? 
Well, it's typically as I lie down on the pillow, I get this sudden shortness of breath, like someone's put their hand quite firmly over my mouth. I can still breathe, obviously, but it's difficult. It happens every night. We're in the process of buying a house and trying to sell ours at the same time. And my husband is convinced that it's just anxiety. The funny thing is, he might be right, because every time that it happens, instead of reaching for my rescue inhaler, I just sit up and after a few minutes, it's gone. You mentioned that you're moving house at the moment. May I ask, what type of work do you do? I'm an IT manager. Well, I am for now, but there's a rumor going around that I might lose my job very soon. All right, how did you go? Hopefully you got six correct. As I said at the beginning, listening part A is the easiest of the listening subtests and you really should be aiming to get full marks. You can pop your uh, number into the comments below if you like. Also, in the description below, you're gonna find a link to a blog about listening part A with lots of useful tips, so you might wanna check that out. And finally, just one more reminder, if you are taking the OET test, then check out our mini mock test with feedback. It is the best possible way to begin your preparation. Cool bananas, my name is Jay. Thanks for watching.